What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm back at the BAMP Squad Garage and we're gonna show you how to install the B2B Fab lift kit and spacers on the Volkswagen Taos. Let's take a look at what we got. So and here's the lift kit. It comes with new bolts for the front, the spacer for the rear spring, and the spacer for the front. This is a pass-through design, so this is gonna slide on top of the strut mount and these longer bolts here are gonna slide through and secure everything in place. This is the spacer kit. We've got 15 mil and 20 mil going on, 20 mil in the rear, 15 mil in the front. They've included new ball seat lug bolts for factory wheels. Now we've got the spacer themselves here. These are the 15 mil pair, the 20 mils in here. As you can see, they're hub centric and multi-lug. And lastly, we've got the, uh, the instructions. They are in color, they have torque specs, uh, breakdown of what the suspension looks like and everything very detailed We're going to show you guys how to do this and follow these instructions so you can do this at home as well Let's get started. All right guys. We got it up on jack stands in the front. We're gonna do the rear after first thing is remove this weather stripping Probably the easiest part of this whole install next thing you're gonna do is pull out these little clips I might need a tool. Yep. I need a tool for this. We've got the handy snap-on i don't know what it's called but it's made by snap-on it's gotta be good right one right here that's it we're gonna pull these little foam blocks out just kind of slide them to the side pull that out now you should have access yes you do to the three top bolts on top of the strut mount all right, so besides the top three 13 mil bolts that are up there, I'm also gonna go ahead and disconnect the 18, I wanna say, I'll double check that, but the 18 for the sway bar end link. Don't know if the sway bar is gonna hinder us dropping this down. The instructions say that all you have to do is drop the suspension down, and then up here, you're gonna slide in the front spacers with the logo facing out, so make sure you do that correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect both sides of the sway bar end link again just as a precaution it's easy enough to take out but once we get this droop down uh show you guys how much room we have and how it goes in all right hey guys uh wanted to let you know stay tuned to the end of the video we're gonna do a little giveaway from b2b fab uh just as part of the channel nothing crazy it's not a lift kit or anything but stay tuned and check out what it is all right so the sway bar end link is an 18 it's like i've done this before We don't need to remove the bottom and this may not even be necessary, but it's just as a precaution. All right, and then bolts are out. We're going to hop up top and get those 13s. Now we're getting these 13 mils loose off this top mount. I don't know if you can hear in the background, but there's an ice cream truck coming. So we might have to take an ice cream break soon. There's one of them. Once you loosen it, you can pretty much get it by hand for the first two. The last one might be kind of weird because everything gets a little bit loose. But as long as the strut stays level, you can usually get them by hand. And also something you don't see right now is under the control arm on this side, I did put another jack just as a precaution so it doesn't drop all the way down. All right, the top three bolts are out. And there's the ice cream truck. Time for an ice cream break. This ice cream break is brought to you by Blue Ribbon. Got me an orange dream sickle and the ice cream truck driver. All right, so we got the top bolts out as you saw before. We had our ice cream and now I'm gonna slide in the spacer. Again, per the instructions, B2B faces out towards you. So it's gonna go in the car like this. All right, and with the strut 
all the way forward, you have enough room to go behind it and slide it in place. And then if you look up top here, you can kind of see the holes that it's gonna go through. We got it in place. We're gonna go ahead and uh, use the low profile jack to jack this back up and put the bolts through. I grab the bolts. And you're just gonna install these in the reverse order that you took them out. You need to get everything lined up. All right, so everything's lined up. You might have to reach through and kind of get everything positioned, get these started. All right, guys, so we got the, uh, the top three bolts in that are included with the B2B kit. They're also 13 mil. They pass through, like I said. If we take a look under here, you can see up there's the spacer and how it just sits right on top of the strut mount and the bolts again, they pass through and come right there. So we're gonna move on to the driver's side and show you all that. Top three bolts are out and we're gonna show you how to put the spacer in again. So again, it slides in, logo faces out toward you. Look up there in the holes, get it lined up, and then get a bolt started. But first, we're gonna jack this up a little bit. When she asked where you learned that, this is where you did it. All right, that's started. We're gonna go up top and get these bolted down. And while you're doing this, you might have to reach under and move the strut and the spacer a little bit just to get everything lined up. That's normal. Last bolt. All right, those are in. Let's take a look at their instruction manual. Torque specs for the top bolts are 30 Newton meters. Here I'm just tightening the sway bar end length back to 18 mil. Everything's reconnected. We're gonna put the wheel spacers on, put the wheels back on. Show you guys over here, we got a little wheel hanger. This guy right here, this will help get everything lined up so we don't have to fiddle with trying to balance everything while getting the wheels back on. All right, we moved over to the other side because the jack is still over here and because the suspension has a little bit more droop now. Uh, it was too low to the ground, so we used the jack, jacked this up. We're gonna get this wheel on. You can see this hanger is very handy. Make sure you grab the correct length lug bolts because they are specific for the 15s and the 20s. I'm not going to bore you guys with watching me put lug bolts on, so we're going to stop here and I'll show you the result on the ground. Right now we're just reinstalling the rubber gasket. We got the foam pieces back in. We double checked the torque once the car was on the ground for the top bolts. And also don't forget the three little clips that go along and hold this tray down. All right, so for the rear, we're just going to do one side at a time. We're gonna remove that lower shock bolt and the sway bar end link bolt right there as well. And then with the rear control arm supported, you drop it down and pull the spring out. That's all you have to do for the rear. Well, sorry, minus the shield here. You do have to take that off too. We'll show you guys that. But again, we're just gonna do it one side at a time. There's not really a good place to put the jack stand. So we're gonna keep the jack under it, put the jack stand there for safety and just do one side at a time. If need be, we'll reconnect the sway bar once everything's on the ground because there will be enough room under here to get the sway bar bolt back in and get that tightened up. So these bolts that hold on the lower shield are 10 mil. Top, there's a clip I didn't see. There'll be two clips. Is there two clips? Yes, there is. All right, so two 10 mils, two of these little pressure clips. Just use a little pry tool or flathead screwdriver, whatever you got. And then the shield comes off. Next, we're gonna take the 13 mil off of the sway bar end link right here. So 
set that aside. The bolt actually goes all the way through the control arm, so you have to pull the entire bolt out before you can pull out the end link. Oh my god. <laughs> all right. Here's the helpers. Get inside. All right, so the sway bar bolt's out. Again, that was a 13. Goes all the way through. This is an 18. There's a nut on one side and a bolt that goes through. So you gotta hold the other side with a wrench. So there's that. And as you can see, this is already supported because if it wasn't, I'd probably get hit in the face by a spring. So now, we drop this down. So not part of the instructions, and this might be because we're doing each uh, one side at a time, but we did pull off the bolt that goes through and through to the knuckle. Without this removed, I wasn't able to get enough droop to get the spring out. Again, this wasn't in the instructions, but I believe if you do both sides up at the same time, there will be enough droop and you won't have to remove this. If you do, it's just an 18 mil, same as the shock bolt, goes through the control arm, through the knuckle, and that's that. Next, we're gonna go ahead and pull the spring out. Set that aside. We do have to remove the rubber isolators down here. There's a plastic clip as well. Uh, per the instructions, the clip will not be reused. So here's the spring isolator and the plastic clip that will not be reused. Next, what you do is put the rubber isolator on top of the spring spacer. There is a hole and if you can see in there, the rubber does have a little nipple that goes into the hole. This goes face down, spring spacer goes into the control arm, spring goes on top. So just like that. So you get the spring back into place, we've got to put the jack back under the control arm and jack it back up. I have done this before on an all track, and I will say this seems kind of sketchy when you're doing it because the spring is huge. As long as everything is in place, the jack is secure, you can get this in uh, without any safety concerns. And then as you bring it back up, you wanna just kinda of move the control arm into place so that the spindle falls down. And then here's the bolt that we took out. And get that through. Have to kind of play with the jack a little bit to get it lined up. A little tap. If it gives you any resistance, don't keep going. You don't want to mess up the threads. But it went right in. Put the nut back on the back side. That's there. You can lower this a little bit so you can get the shock bolt back in. Look at that. Perfect. We'll get the persuader. That's it. Nut back on the back side, just like the other bolt. Uh, again, per B2B Fab's instructions, the lower shock bolt is 50 newton meters. Sway bar and link bolt, 20 newton meters plus a half turn. We're gonna go ahead and get these tightened and we'll come back. All right, so we got these two 18s on, tightened, torqued down, and we were actually able to get the sway bar and link bolt all the way through. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that. Uh, we'll put the spacer on, put the wheel on, and we'll go to the other side. All right, so one thing I forgot to mention, make sure you put the shield back on. We're gonna throw the 20 mil spacer on here. Like that. All right, so just like the other side, we've got the wheel off already. It's up on the jack. Jack stand is there for safety. We're gonna get these two 18s out. 13, take off the shield, reverse that, put everything back in, and we'll show you the end result. All right, guys, this side is done. The whole car's done. Let's do a little walk around. We're gonna go take it out for a quick drive. And also the e-brake is up, so this will settle a little tiny bit once we actually get going. But I think this looks pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna go wash my hands, go for a test drive. We'll be back. Well, we're testing it right away. We're behind his house now in this uh, little field. Just kind of listening, see if we hear anything crazy, but so far so good. Still rides good. Yeah. And 
Lime, it's probably probably doesn't need it much. Doesn't need at all. All right, so we just got back from the drive. Everything's smooth, no noises, and as you can see, definitely higher than stock. All right, so that wraps up the B2B Fab install. Huge shout out to them for sending us the parts to try out. Again, this was the Taos spacer lift kit and wheel spacers, 15 mil and 20 mil. Overall, the car drove great. Uh, next on the list is gonna be wheels and tires, I think from New Speed, and I don't know what tires yet. And then we're trying to do a, uh, a rooftop tent. So if anybody out there watching wants to sponsor us and give us a rooftop tent, hit me up. And next, the giveaway. Again, I didn't say it was big or anything, but we're going to be giving away a keychain from B2B Fab. All you got to do to enter is leave a comment. Leave a comment on the video. We'll randomly draw in a week or two after the video comes out, and then I'll ship it out to you. Thanks so much for stopping by the channel. If you have any questions uh, about the install, about the parts, anything like that at all, feel free to leave a comment, and I'll reply accordingly. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And until next time, we'll see you guys later.